Yesterday's Galaxy Unpacked was held, but there were things Samsung didn't tell us. So in this video, I'm going to tell you 10 things Samsung didn't tell us at the Galaxy Unpacked about Galaxy S24. Let's get started. The new Galaxy S24 Ultra can now take 24 megapixel photos like the iPhone, but only within Expert RAW. Remember that when the iPhone 15 Pro Max was announced, it was quite an interesting novelty that from the automatic mode, now the photos went up from 12 to 24 megapixels. And it really is a noticeable difference when reviewing the results and seeing the deeper details of the photographs. So the fact that Samsung now allows 24 megapixel pictures is a good thing, but it would be much better if it allowed us to take pictures of this resolution in automatic mode and not necessarily in expert RAW, because that application is much more specialized, takes a little longer to take the pictures and takes them in both RAW and JPG. But as I say, it's for more advanced photographers. If you're a more casual photographer and you want 24 megapixel photos, you're going to have to do that whole process unlike the iPhone where this will all happen from the automatic mode without as much complexity. Galaxy AI features will be free until at least 2025. This definitely that is very controversial because this was a completely AI centric device with all the Galaxy AI features like real time call translation, the capabilities to erase and move objects with generative AI and many others. So it's surprising a lot with all this but in the fine print on all the official Samsung sites it is made clear that they will be free at least until 2025. After that it is likely that they will require some subscription although the fact that they say at least gives us hope that later they will extend it until 2026 or continue extending it but nothing is guaranteed. So you can go preparing your pocket so that in the future you will pay your subscription to have all the functions of this device. Processors. We will have Exynos 2400 for Galaxy S24 and S24 Plus. This worldwide with the exception of the United States, Canada and China, where they will have the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 for Galaxy. This processor is the one that will be used worldwide by the Galaxy S24 Ultra. Both processors are built on a 4 nanometer process, but the clock frequencies that the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 for Galaxy has are higher, so it is a more powerful processor. Definitely that the Exynos processor falls behind in specs and surely in real life as well. Although I found it very curious that Samsung did not mention Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 for Galaxy in its presentation, as it can become a differentiating factor with respect to other competitors that integrate the standard edition of Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, but it surely didn't because if it did it was also going to have to mention the Exynos 2400 that they probably still aren't that proud of. It has been Qualcomm in charge of sending press releases to point out that this processor was a special edition for Galaxy, but they have not specifically revealed what is its clock frequency and more technical details to see what will be the difference with respect to the standard edition or if it will simply be the name. Unlike last year where there was a difference in clock frequency, some users have already run initial benchmarks to compare Exynos versus Snapdragon performance. The Galaxy S24 with Exynos scored about 1.7 million points, while the Galaxy S24 Ultra with Snapdragon came in at 1.8 million, or a difference of about 7%. But pay attention to the temperature difference because the model with Exynos went up 14.3 degrees Celsius after finishing the test. While the Galaxy S24 Ultra only went up 0.6 degrees Celsius according to the Antutu benchmark conducted by a channel called Hoi Nong. So it is clear that the Snapdragon processor will be much better. And of course this produces annoyance because both Galaxy S24 and S24 Plus will indeed have a variant with Snapdragon processor, but only for selected countries that I told you about. So that sounds very unfair. The best thing would have been to have Exynos worldwide on these models and the Ultra worldwide with Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 for Galaxy. The 7 years of updates that Samsung announced will only apply to Galaxy S24, that is Galaxy S23 series and all past models will not have this policy. That will obviously be a benefit they want to give to this new model as well as a reason to buy. The director perspective mode is now called dual view. The interface has changed completely as now you have to press a button to give you a choice of two cameras whereas before it showed you at the bottom those views in real time. A small change that we will discuss in detail later. The always on mode can now look like the always on display on iPhones which was a mode that was quite criticized on the Android side and on the side of many Galaxy fans because the iPhone what it does is dim the screen but still shows the wallpaper. 
although this can get to consume a lot of battery, but now on Galaxy S24 you can have exactly the same effect, although fortunately on Samsung you can choose whether you want the wallpaper to be displayed or you want everything to be displayed in black except for the information. The lock screen has many new features. The photo you can apply effects to the background image allowing you to select as color filters but they can also distinguish between foreground and background to apply different color effects. There are new lock and unlock animations this with the default wallpapers so that there is a kind of transition between the lock screen and the home screen. And there are new widgets for this screen very similar to the iPhone ones. Let's face it, the Galaxy S24 seems to be very much inspired by the iPhone software, so these are little phone status indicators of different parameters that you can now place on that lock screen. The Galaxy S24 Ultra does have the ability to switch between its three lenses recording in 4K at 60 frames per second with HDR10+, but the base model does not. This sounds pretty complex and specialized, but it's a good tidbit of information. That is, the Galaxy S24 does have the ability to record in 4K at 60 frames per second with HDR10 Plus using the ultra-wide camera, but if you start recording with this lens, you're not going to be able to switch to the main camera. You're simply going to have a range from 0.6 to 2x zoom, whereas the ultra model can be switched between its lenses with this recording quality. There is a new wallpaper generator with generative artificial intelligence. That is, you choose more or less a style of wallpaper, but then customize with different texts how you want that background to look like so that finally the device intelligently generates it. And finally, the S24 Ultra is not lighter than the S23 Ultra despite having titanium. Titanium is supposed to be a lighter material, and that's why it could be a less heavy device than the last generation. But you have to remember that it has a larger vapor chamber, and they did mention that in their presentation. Although it is also thinner, going from 8.9 to 8.6 millimeters thick. These were 10 things that Samsung did not mention during the Galaxy Unpacked, but there is something else that I want to tell you as additional information that I find very relevant, and that is that in Galaxy S24 and S24 Plus, there was no evolution in the cameras, neither in the sensors nor in the lenses. While in Galaxy S24 Ultra only the periscope camera changed from a 10 megapixel camera with 10x optical zoom and f aperture 4.9 to a 50 megapixel camera with 5x optical zoom and f aperture 3.4. So let's say it improved on the sensor and improved on the aperture but the zoom range was reduced although according to several images I've been looking at the quality could be very similar. Later we will make a comparative video between one generation and another and of course between the iPhone 15 Pro Max and the Galaxy S24 Ultra. For the moment this has been all for this video, I hope you liked it, if you did you know you can indicate it and we'll see you next time.